We here at Joe Blow are big fans of Julian Sands, so with the news of his recent passing, we wanted to highlight one of our favorites from his filmography. And while he may not be front and center, his role was definitely a memorable one. Somehow that South American male has mated with a domestic house spider and created a very deadly strain. Spiders are pretty much a universal fear. Sure, everyone knows the person that refuses to kill one and gives you a whole speech about how good they are, but those of us that were scarred by a certain film from 1990 may think differently. Because the spiders here are aggressive and will attack you when you least expect it. And that's the most terrifying of creatures. So it's well past time that we figured out what happened to arachnophobia. Rock and roll. Warning right off the bat here, there's going to be a lot of spiders, so if you've got a fear of those things, get ready to do some squirming. Arachnophobia Irrational fear of spiders and other arachnids such as scorpions and ticks. It's one of the more common phobias, so it's pretty much the perfect title for a film about these little arachnids and a town taken over by them. Steven Spielberg's Amblin Entertainment would get involved early on and provide that signature look they were known for in the 80s. Frank Marshall would make his directorial debut with the film after years of being a successful producer. Marshall compared his film to Hitchcock's The Birds, where he said, laughing like a roller coaster no one wants to be terrified while we may disagree with him on that one he does provide quite the roller coaster especially once the spiders really start spreading in the second half hard to argue with his logic here if you count yourself amongst the people that haven't seen the film or just plain old don't remember it we'll tell you how this massive spider made its way to middle america See, the film starts off in the Venezuelan jungle, where entomologist James Atherton discovered a new species of spider. These are particularly aggressive and believed to have prehistoric origins. One of the spiders kills the photographer and snags a ride on his coffin back to the US. Customs should be absolutely ashamed of themselves. The arrival of the body coincides with the arrival of Dr. Ross Jennings. He's just getting set up in the town, and unfortunately, his barn ends up harboring the massive general spider. He also really wants to have a wine cellar. Tasty, huh? That price, who can afford to drink it? It goes in the basement. Don't worry, that'll come back later. When you see the massive spider approach an animal, it's hard not to cringe at their potential fate. I mean, it's the size of a cat. And even when they're little, they get way too close for comfort. One of the interesting ideas that the film presents is that this new species of spider actually behave like a hive. Think of it like a queen ant or a queen bee. Only this time we've got a queen arachnid controlling all of her little drones. But then there's the male as well, the general. Yeah, I think I prefer the bees too. But it gives the spiders a bit of sentience and coordination that often isn't represented in a believable way. But here, everything introduced makes perfect sense. And it probably helps that there's such a believable entomologist explaining things, as Julian Sands is absolutely wonderful as Dr. James Atherton. He immediately feels like such an authority on the matter that the day practically feels saved when he shows up near the end of the film. But then all hope is quickly lost. My nerves were challenged in the death scene when I had to have about 200 of these small little spiders on my face and they were, you know, it was all real, no CGI. I had this special mask which they dropped them down a funnel so they could suddenly pull the mask away and be filming. But for several minutes, I was very conscious of all these little legs running around my eyes and mouth and yeah that was a memory thankfully though sans didn't have arachnophobia himself and didn't mind the spiders on set oh my god they got the professor john goodman is an absolute scene stealer as the exterminator his humor bites into some of the more tense moments and feels different from what we're used to seeing goodman portray heck he almost feels like bill murray at some point Delbert McClintock is definitely someone you won't be forgetting. Yeah, that's right. I'm bad. 
The big finale occurs in the basement that Ross had hoped would be his wine cellar. It's one of the many instances of the film just being incredibly well written. With the rotten wood and nail gun being set up as the family moves into the new house. The special effects may look a little silly over 33 years later, but there's still a realness to them that makes it easy to suspend your disbelief. And despite what you may think, no spiders were hurt in the making of this film, as production went through great pains to ensure their safety. Even the shot of Goodman stepping on a spider was done with a hollowed out shoe so as to not actually squish him. Though they did make sure to mix a bag of chips crunching with some stomped on mustard packets for the sound of the spider being squished. In fact, despite their scary appearance, these spiders were chosen due to their friendliness. Delena canceratus, otherwise known as Avondale spiders, hailed from New Zealand and proved to be easy to wrangle. And most of the spiders we see are very, very real. They would often be guided around by heat and cold. Entomologist Stephen R. Kucher handled the spiders and provided some incredible shots. They also used Lemon Pledge, that's furniture cleaner for the uninitiated, as boundaries for the spiders, as they hated the stuff. It's said that the unedited footage of the spiders would have hair blowers constantly going off in the background. But one scene just happened to be a happy accident as the shower scene saw actress Corey Wells washing herself and having a run-in with a spider. What was supposed to be a spider falling onto her neck instead became one falling directly onto her face. Thankfully though, the actress had gotten used to the spiders and knew they weren't harmful, so she took it as the perfect opportunity and kept on acting. The spider crawled onto her neck and chest before she finally resumed the scene and screamed in terror. It's a great bit of improv that really adds to the overall feel. The massive general spider that we see in the film's conclusion was actually built by Jamie Heinemann, who would later go on to create the very popular Mythbusters series. Ah, the good old days of wonderful practical effects. In fact, a large part of what makes arachnophobia work is how real everything feels from the very real spiders to the practical effects used when real spiders weren't possible, there's something physical for the actors and camera to interact with. This really seems to be a big reason that the film has persevered through the years. Arachnophobia released on July 18, 1990 and brought in over $8 million on its opening weekend. One of the main struggles was regarding how to market the film. Was it horror? Was it comedy? Adverts settled on calling it a thrillomedy, which is hilarious in the now common days of horror comedies. Despite that, it was still a big hit, generating over $53 million domestically. The movie would go on to rack up $30 million in video rentals. That's a lot. Funnily enough, Jeff Daniels' performance was actually memorable enough that when researchers at the University of California Riverside found a new worm species, they called it Trantabellus Jeff Danielsi. If you're wondering what the connection is, it's because the worms infect tarantulas. Daniels has got to be proud of that one. It's recently even been announced that Amblin would be partnering with James Wan's Atomic Monster Productions to produce a remake. Happy Death Day and Freaky's Christopher Landon will be writing and directing, so I'm sure we'll be hearing more about that one soon. And they better have real spiders and not CG monstrosities. <sighs> Regardless, they've got quite the hill to climb in terms of reaching up to the same heights as the original, because when I went to the bathroom, I thought of this movie. When I played football, I thought of this movie. And you better believe that when this guy showed up as a goofball shitting his brains out on a toilet, I damn sure thought of this movie. Because few films evoke the guttural reaction that arachnophobia does. No, I frankly doubt the nest is in the barn. Well, I frankly know it is, Delbert. I was in the barn. I saw a web. There is a web in the barn. A web would indicate an arachnoid presence. 